single evaporator with the compressor below. So that's our inlet into our evaporator. Let's have a look at our outlet. And we're going to put a trap on it with an anti-siphon bend. So that will stop refrigerant migrating from the compressor and the suction line during compressor off times. The evaporator's suction connections number four. Single evaporator, this time with the compressor above. So because it's above, we must make sure that we have an anti-siphon trap at the bottom for oil return and that's all we need. There's no other connections on that suction line on the way to the compressor. A vapour line that's rising to a compressor must be trapped at the base as well as every 3.5 metres of rise. Obviously the size may need to be reduced one size as per a table selection if velocity requires this. Reducing your pipe size by one size to increase the velocity is good practice providing it is needed. Charts for each main refrigerant should be checked so that your minimum kilowatt flow on your part load is correct and make sure you correct for additional superheat or a differing liquid entering temperature at the TX fee because both of those affect your refrigerant flow rate when checking your kilowatts. So note the traps are 150 millimeters deep and every 3.5 meters of rise vertically on a vapor line in terms of suction then you must have an additional trap. That additional trap must also be 150 millimeters deep. Compressor connections. The compressor needs good oil return so slope all pipes fall towards that is the compressor. So here is the suction line and it has an anti-siphon loop immediately ahead of the compressor. Don't forget that compressors need vibration eliminators but make sure they're fitted parallel to the crankshaft axis and not at right angles to it. Of course the final tube service valve connection at the compressor is at right angles to the compressor. Now a rigid brace is required immediately beyond the vibration eliminator to a suitable structural mass.